Hey YouTube, uh, today I've got a 1987 Mercedes-Benz 420 SEL. Uh, this is the W126 chassis with the M116 engine. That's a V8. Um, anyway, what we got here today is customer complaint where the oil pressure sending unit doesn't necessarily read correctly. Um, particularly when the engine's off, but the ignition is on. So if you look here, I'm gonna turn the ignition to the on position. And we got an issue here where that should be at zero with the engine, uh, with the engine off. Um, and clearly it is not, it's just above zero. Um, the owner says that occasionally the gauge will even still be at three with the engine off so um, we want to get that repaired here um, it's most likely a sending unit but I will show you some things to look out for here okay so we are in the engine bay here here's the passenger right side of the vehicle um, there's the air filter um, just to give you an idea where the sending unit at is at we've got the oil filter housing right here. The sending unit is on the bottom side of the oil uh, filter housing. So it'll be about where my finger is pointed right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get underneath the vehicle and we'll see you here in the next video clip. Okay, so we are at the front end of the vehicle looking towards the back or the aft end of the vehicle. Uh, this unit that's right here is the EGR air pump or the air injection pump, smog pump some people call it. That's the alternator up here. And right behind the air injection pump hose is the oil pressure sending unit right here. It has a single wire going to it as you can see here. Uh, this one does not appear to be leaking or anything strange like that. Okay, so this is the bottom this is the bottom of the oil filter housing. There's the nut for the oil pressure sending unit and a single wire. So we don't have an issue here where um, we've got an obvious leaking pressure sending unit, okay? But we do want to check the circuit here to make sure everything is working correctly before we condemn this um, oil pressure sending unit. So unlike most vehicles, when the sending unit is disconnected, or in other words, you have um, infinite resistance, the oil pressure gauge will peg out at the high mark. So three bars on the instrument cluster on this Mercedes. As you have less oil pressure, you will get a signal closer to ground. So less resistance, okay? If you ground this wire out and turn the ignition on, that um, oil pressure gauge should go to zero. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna unplug this wire here, uh, get a couple alligator clips and just ground it out to the block or something. And we'll go back into the vehicle and see if the oil pressure gauge pegs out at zero. All right, so I've got the, um, oil pressure sending unit connector unplugged. And for right now, we're just not gonna have it hooked into anything. We'll go back to the cab of the car, turn the ignition switch on and see that the oil pressure pegs out at three bar. We are now back in the cab. Uh, I'm gonna turn the ignition switch to the on position and we will observe the oil pressure gauge with the wire fully disconnected um, that gauge should peg out to the three. So I'm just going to blip the ignition um, to the on position very briefly if that needle pegs out. I don't want to keep it pegged at the three. Okay, as you can see there, it went directly to the three as soon as we put power to the instrument cluster. So now I'm going to go back to that oil pressure sending unit and ground it out, ground out the wire for that oil pressure sending unit to ground turn the ignition switch on and that should stay at the zero. Okay, so as you can see here, I've got the electrical connector for that oil pressure sending unit hooked up to my alligator clips here. I'm just gonna go directly to the engine block ground 
okay? So from here, we're gonna go back into the cab and turn the ignition switch on and observe the gauges. All right, once again, we are back in the driver's seat. I'm gonna turn the ignition switch to the on position and that pressure gauge should stay um, at the zero. Okay, so it stays at the zero. That means that our wire to the sending unit is intact. Um, we verified that it works in both directions. With it unplugged, it goes to three bar. And with it plugged directly to the ground, it stays at zero. So that tells me that there is a problem internal to the oil pressure sending unit and that we need to replace it. All right, so we're back underneath the vehicle. We've determined that the oil pressure setting unit needs to come out. Um, pretty easy to get out. Um, in this case, this one takes a 17 millimeter right there. Okay, so just put it in there and break it free. This unit should untwist um, from the oil filter housing. Um, you will leak some oil out, so have an oil catch pan ready, and preferably the new, new sending unit ready as well. All right, so we'll get that busted loose. Um, we'll have the, the oil catch can ready to go here. Because it's at the bottom of the oil filter housing, so it might just spill out. unthread it from the hole. We uh, want to be careful that this crush washer goes with us. And we'll pull it off. And we can reinstall the new one in its place. So let me get position here. So you can see the oil's already starting to leak out. Got the washer. We want to take the washer with us. I'm not draining all of the floor here. Drop that into the oil pan. Okay, wipe this surface clean before we put the new setting unit in. You want to work quickly here. Grab the new oil pressure setting unit, thread it in. a little bit of a mess, but not too bad. So get the 17 millimeter wrench and tighten it till it's snug. Um, I don't know what the torque spec is offhand, but you'll feel it tighten up. It's not really, not really any different than doing an oil plug on the, on the oil pan, okay? You don't want to go stupid tight just until it stops. All right, so from here, we just need to clean up our mess with some brake clean and clean up the connector here and we're done. Um, of course, check the oil level as well because we did drain some oil. All right, as you can see here, I've gave it a good dousing of uh, brake cleaner here and got rid of all that oil that uh, we might have spilled here. Uh, I also got the inside of the connector here so that it's got a good, good connection. And the last thing we need to do is just plug this guy into the sending unit. Okay, so it just plugs in like so, snaps in, and that's all that it does. So we'll go back to the cab of the car and make sure that this thing's working correctly. Okay, we are back in the cab of this uh, 420 SEL. I got the key in hand, sticking it in the ignition, turning it to the on position. Note that we do not have any oil pressure registering. So I'm gonna start the car up very briefly here and just make sure that that oil pressure um, rises. And as you can see, oil pressure rose immediately. Everything's good. So I'm gonna shut the vehicle off. Make sure the pressure gauge drops back down to zero, turn the ignition switch back on, 
and that should stay pegged out at the zero bar mark. All right, so that's how you do an oil pressure sending unit on one of these W126 bodies with the V8 engines. Um, I'm pretty sure the um, 500 SE and the 560 SEL are similar. Um, basically the exact same process, just a slightly different engine, it's a bigger engine. Anyway, I hope this video helps. Um, if you like it, please click the like button. Um, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please click the subscribe button and click on that bell icon to set up your notifications so you can be notified the next time I upload a video. Alrighty, well, got some other things I need to do here, so we will see you later. Have a good day.